you're talking about a, uh, a young man who's homosexual, who isn't hiding it, is very proud of who he is. You're talking about a small southern town. It's taboo. It's taboo. Especially back then. And he's wearing it proud. And somebody didn't like it. It clearly had to have been related to his sexuality, don't you believe, Mike? 100%. 100%. I don't feel like it's a hit and run. I've looked at the body itself. You know, a lot of people seem a little nervous to say the name Murdoch. Can't the county now. Well, where's your emergency? We know that he was found at 4 o'clock in the morning on Sandy Run Road in Hampton. He was about a mile from his car. He had died of horrific blunt force trauma to his head. His skull was fractured. His wallet was in his car. He had a cell phone and he was not that far from his father's house where he lived. A special accident investigative team looked at the case and determined it was a homicide, but a pathologist disagreed saying he likely died from a mirror of a passing car hitting Stephen's face. A heated discussion between trooper Todd Proctor and pathologist Dr. Aaron Presnell reveals that the death was ruled this way because Smith was found in the road. Blue paint chips are found on Smith's clothes but cannot be traced to a specific make or model. It definitely was not a hit and run. He had blunt force trauma and it seemed to be an intentional act which we consider homicide. Eric Bland, an attorney involved in several cases connected to Alec Murdoch's numerous cases, knows Stephen Smith's mom, Sandy. So we think he was dumped there on the road. He was a very sharp kid as like a young man. He was cautious, and so he wouldn't have been walking down the road. He certainly knew the area. He had a cell phone, could have called somebody for help. I've prosecuted cases of people having been hit by cars. This is not the scene of a hit and run. There was no debris. On there the was road. no debris, lower extremities, nothing was broken, and his loosely tied sneakers were still on yeah. him, on yes. his feet. Yes. They would have been blown off. Mm -hmm. Yes. If it was a hit and run. Every, Absolutely. Every time. Every hit and run case I've ever touched. Shoes blow off. They did not have their shoes on. A hit and run is extraordinarily violent. Extraordinarily violent. He had some abrasions, but not significant. Inconsistencies in the initial investigation have left many wondering why his death was never investigated as a homicide. It was clear that this case was not handled correctly. Why? I can't tell you. Maybe it was simply incompetence. Maybe it was purposeful. But I do believe that the truth is going to come out. Sandy Smith was relentless in her quest for answers. She asked the FBI, the governor, and others to keep investigating. But the case went nowhere until Mallory Beach was killed on the Murdoch boat four years later. People started asking questions about the old Stephen Smith case. Corporal Duncan told us the Murdoch family name came up in his initial investigation, but that part of the investigation didn't go anywhere. And when asked if behind the scenes there was pressure to stop the investigation or to leave the case as a hit and run, Personally, I think there was some type of pressure or just lack of the investigation upon other agencies to, to do anything. But the real break in the Smith case came after the Murdoch double murders. During that investigation, new information came to light. The South Carolina Law Enforcement Division tells News Nation they've made progress in the death investigation of Stephen Smith. However, this investigation remains active and ongoing. Why did they reopen the investigation? It was something they found while they were investigating Paula Maggie's death, was all I was told. But what it is, I do not know. At first, I thought maybe it was something on his phone, Paul's phone. And then rumor was going out, they found something on his computer. And then they found um, a baseball bat. And But I have no clue what it is, but I know I'm going to know soon. Well, it was ruled by the pathologist that it was a vehicle versus pedestrian. But there was no damage anywhere. He had a dis dislocated right shoulder, and then all his eye socket was broke. The whole back of his head was crushed. And he had some defense wounds on him. His shoes were still on. It first came up when um, Stephen's body was still at autopsy. 
And some, some of his friends came over, him, him and Stephanie's friends, and they said, you know, it was the Murdoch boys that did this. And then I was like, and Stephanie come up to me crying, and I said, well, Steph, you know, you can't believe everything you hear. People's gonna talk, you know, so. And then it was like, you know, we never thought that. But then it just kept coming over and over and over again. Reporter Will Folks with Fit News tells us Buster's name often came up with the Smith case. And there was clearly a Murdoch tie-in to the death of Stephen Smith because if you read investigatory report from his death back in 2015, the Murdoch name is mentioned dozens of times. In fact, this was one of the first files I ever received related to this story. The oldest Murdoch son, Buster, was the same age as Stephen and his twin sister. Being from a small town, they all went to school together and everyone knew one another. As the multiple Murdoch cases have played out in the small Carolina community, rumors have swirled. After the news of Stephen's death came rumors that Buster and Stephen had some sort of relationship. The Smith family attorney says this. They graduated high school together. They had, you know, friends in common, played ball together when they were younger. You can't say there's no connection. Nobody knows what Stephen's life was like. What I will say is that we know of no evidence that would support any kind of, you know, relationship between Stephen and Buster. But it was Alex Murdoch and his brother Randy who came to the scene of Stephen's death going through the crime tape. No one's sure why. I know that soon after Randy Murdoch had called. Randy is Alex Murdoch's brother. When I was on the phone with Joel, he said, let me put you on hold because um, Randy Murdoch's calling. He said, Randy wants to take Stephen's case pro bono. And I was like, what case? Because they said it was a hit and run. Did you think that call from, from Randy Murdoch was strange? Yes, it made no sense to me. Yeah. and his... I mean, really, there was no case there yet. Yeah, you didn't know it was a case yet. And his law office has said that he didn't call, he didn't know Stephen had died until after the funeral. Um, excuse me, but Alex Murdoch and Randy Murdoch were standing at the crime scene. Oh, wow. You they were that. at the crime scene after Stephen's body was moved. Randy Murdoch called and asked, was that you that just passed by? I said, yeah. He said, I wish you would have stopped so I could have met you. Hmm. Wow. At the crime scene. At yeah. the crime scene. His office says that he never offered to represent the family in any way. But. Well, if you can believe anything a Murdoch says. Mm. <laughs> SLED has released some of the interrogations and interviews regarding Stephen's case to the media. The lead investigator at the time even voiced his doubts about this being a, a hit and run. Typically, you don't see the highway patrol working a murder, and that's what this is. Right. Wow. That was the lead investigator at the time, yet you still don't have answers and right. you still don't know who did this. Right. This is either an extreme amount of corruption from very powerful people who were able to pull all of these strings, or everybody involved in this did not do their job, and that is very scary for the justice system too. Both sides, it's scary. What do you believe happened to your son, Stephen? I feel like they beat him to death because the only damage was to his head. And he did have some defense wounds. He had a dislocated shoulder. It had to be somebody he knew to put his body like he was walking home. I mean, my heart goes out to her. It's just hard to believe. It's been seven years and Stephen's case is still unsolved. His mother's attorney has yet to bring a case against the Murdoch family. There's no fact that I can point to other than talk, rumor, speculation, and the connection of SLED reopening the case at Moselle. There's nothing connected to the Murdochs. And I'll tell you the other thing. There are people right now in Hampton who know what happened, mm -hmm. and they need to come forward. Sandy lost her son, but she also lost her own community because people were just turning their backs saying, we can't say anything. 
His family reports he would have never left the car, calling him skittish. And his twin sister Stephanie also tells authorities that her brother had become very secretive about two weeks prior to the incident. Documents show investigators fielding tips about the Murdoch family in the days and months following his death. The first tip comes in early August, suggesting swirling rumors of a relationship between Smith and Buster Murdoch, Alec Murdoch's eldest and now only surviving son. An investigator also fields a tip about another possible suspect, but that tipster tells them he passed along the information at the request of Randy Murdoch. Andrew says in the record she has the Murdoch name is mentioned 40 times. Where there's smoke, there's fire. There has to be something to it. Stephen was supposed to go that weekend fishing um, down in the Florida, and he talked about it with his mother. Um, he didn't. He didn't tell her who he was going with, he said it was an important person. So that is a good fact. So I guess SLED will look into who in that area may have been fishing that weekend um, in Florida. And it, are there any communications with Stephen on his phone that would have um, enlightened that to show that he was in communication with an important person that was taking him fishing? That's the only other fact we know. Look, Vinny, um, Everybody universally agrees that he didn't die on that road that night, that something else happened. And the, the Myrtles are no longer going to get the benefit of any doubt. For this to really move, I think they're going to have to exhume his body. And if the state is not going to do that, we are going to start a fundraiser to uh, raise the money for Stephen to be exhumed, get a court order to get permission, hopefully, and then we'll know a little bit more because until the body is exhumed and we can have a real uh, forensic autopsy done, I don't think we're gonna get anywhere because certainly Alex is not gonna talk. I don't expect Randy to talk. And, um, you know, Buster, I'm not sure is willing to talk. And if people aren't willing to talk, we're gonna get nowhere. So I think it's gonna have to be a forensic examination rather than a verbal um, disclosure. I was so proud of him, you know, because his favorite saying is, I am who I am, and God made me, and God don't make mistakes. He would be so ecstatic just to, just to know his name is everywhere. He was honored at the 2021 Gay Pride Parade in South Carolina, and funds were raised to provide the gravestone that his family had never been able to afford. Now there's like so many people on my side that wants justice for Stephen like I do, and it's amazing.